I tell of a time that long past, when Duncan, the king, held the power on this estate and we loved him well. We was men of war. Macbeth, Banquo, Ross. We punished offenders and gathered all finances due to the king. But in time, Duncan grew fat, slack, and many misrule men took occasion thereof to trouble the peace with seditious commotion. We were assailed by rebels. Fearful of his crown, Duncan charged his cousin, the ever loyal Macbeth, to take up arms and lead us into battle against the rebels. Revolt, the new estate. This is Macduff. Like a good Nardi soldier, fought against my captivity. Oh, brave friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the brawlers, how did slave it? Doubtful it stood. As two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their heart. But all's too weak. Brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves the name. To carve out his passage to the fiercest slave. Valiant cousin. From that spring whence comfort seemed to come, discomfort swell. Shack here, traitor. The thing of Corda. With furbished arms and new supplies of man began a fresh assault. Dismayed not this, our captains, Macbeth and Banquo. Our sparrows, eagles. Would he hear the lion? I must report there was cannons overcharged with double cracks. Accept them into beard in reeking wounds, or... Memorize another Galgata. I cannot tell. The worthy sign of Ross? Norway himself, with terrible numbers. <laughs> Assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cordor, began a dismal combat. <laughs> Till that balonous bridegroom, oh. Macbeth, wrapped in proof, confronted him with self comparisons, point against point, rebellious arm against storm, curbing his lavish spirit. <laughs> and to conclude, 
The victory fell on us. <laughs> Great happiness. No more the thane of Cordor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death and with his former title, Greek Macbeth. I'll see it done. <laughs> Hail, the noble fine accord. <laughs> Hail to thee, Thane of Glams. Hail to thee, Thane of Cordor. Hail to thee that shall be king hereafter. <laughs> I know I'm Thane of Glams, but hail of Cordor. And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief. If you can look into the sea to tie, and say which will grow and which will not. Speak then to me. Neither beg nor fear your favours, nor your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth, but greater. Not so happy, yet much happy. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail, Macbeth. And Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth. All hail. Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane accord to you, when it not so? To the self-same tune and words. Or have we eaten on the insane root that takes the reason prisoner? Master, thanks. And for an earnest of a greater honour, he bid me from him call thee Thane of Cordor. The Thane of Cordor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Glams and Thane of Cordor, the greatest is behind. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the Thane of Cordor to me promise no less to them? It is strange. Oftentimes, to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Win us with honest trifles to betray in deepest consequence. Faith.
like we were carousing till the second cock. <laughs> and Drink says he's a great provoker of three things. <laughs> what three things does Drink especially provoke? Nose painting, <laughs> sleep and urine. Literally it provokes an unprovoked This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill. Cannot be good. If ill, why is it given the earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am fain of Cordor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion? This horrid image does unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature. Look how our partner's wrapped. <laughs> Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. Give me a favour. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Let us do with the king. The execution done on Cordor. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one that had been studied in his death. To throw away the Deus thing he owed us for a careless trifle. There's no art to find the mind's construction on the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Worthy's cousin. The sin of my ingratitude even now weighs heavy on me. Only I have left to say, more has died due than more than all can pay. Service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest. No, we will establish our estate upon our eldest Malcolm, who we name hereafter Prince of Cumberland. <laughs> Prince of Cumberland, that is a step on which I must fall down or else a leap, for in my way it lies. Stars hide your face, let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye, wink at the hand, yet let that be. The eye fears when it is done to see. My dearest partner in greatness, these weird children met me on the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report that they have more in them than mortal knowledge. 
While I burned and desired to question them further, came missives from the king, who all hailed me, Thane of Cordor, by which title before these weird children saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with, Hail, King that shall be. This I have thought good to deliver thee, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. May it to thy heart. Farewell. Lambs thou art, and Cawdor, and yet shalt be what thou art promised. Yet I feel thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. It would be great, but not without ambition, not without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet would strongly win. Hide thee, Heather. I may pour my spirits in thine ear and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. <coughs> I'm mad to see it. So please, it's true. The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, and sex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shakes my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my women's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers. Wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pull thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. Let my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great glams, where are they, Carter? Greater than both by the old hail hereafter. My dearest love. Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Never shall son that morrow see. My thane is as a book, where men may read strange matters. 
to beguile the time, look like the time. We are welcome in your eye, your hand, and your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. Leave all the rest to me. There are no blows to this. We are your guests on night. Your servants forever. Where's the final call then? If it were done once it's done, then to well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence, catch with his surcease, success. That but this blow might be the be all and end all here. But here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. from all sorts of people. I should be worn now in the newest gloss and cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Has it slept since I'm awake? Is it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I count thy love. <laughs> art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? Pretty peace. I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. Nor time nor place to then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. Given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while he was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail, we fail. Screw your courage to the stick in place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep. Two chamberlains will I with wine and liquor so convinced that memory of the warder of the brain shall be a fume. What can you and I perform upon the young guard of Duncan? Oh. Bring forth men, children only. 
For thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and use their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it other? False face must hide what false heart doth know. Thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. What, sir? Not yet at rest. The king's abed. We are children. To you, they've shown some truth. I think not of them. which I see before me. Handle towards my hand. <coughs> Let me clutch thee. I have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat to press brain. There's no such thing. It is a bloody business which informs us to mine eyes. Now the one half 
world, nature seems dead. Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. and firm set earth in, not my steps, which way they walk, for fear the very stones prey to my whereabouts. And take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. As I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds, too cold breath gives. Sorry sight. A foolish thought to see a sorry sight. I could not say amen. He did say God bless us. Wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I have most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. Consider it not so deeply. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. I thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. But Beth doth made to sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep and it's up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life. So labour's bath. Balm of hurt minds. Great nature's second course. Chief nourish of life's face. What do you mean? Still great sleep. Why did you bring that dagger from the place I must lie there? Go carry it and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I've done. Infirm of purpose, give me the dagger. The sleeping and the dead are but his pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. Is the king starring, worthy Theon? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. The rough night. Horror! Horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new garb. Awake! Awake! Banco and the blade! Malta! Awake! Awake! Shake off this dowdy sleep! Death's counterfeit and look on death itself! Oh, poor Banco and the blade! Banco and the blade! to countenance this horror! Gentle lady, it is not for you to hear what I can speak. Banco! Banco! Our royal master is murdered. Alas, what in our house? To cruel men anywhere. Dear Duff, I privy contradict thyself and say it isn't so. What is amiss? What is it? Your royal father is murdered. Boy, whom? Those of his chamber seem to have done it. The hands and faces are all badged with blood. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I'd lived a blessed time. From this instant, there's nothing serious in mortality, all is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn and the mere lees has left this fault to break on.
you repent me of my fury, I'd have killed him. Wherefore did you so? Who could be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral, in a moment, no man? The expedition of my violent love outran the pauser. Reason. Who could refrain that had a heart to love? And in that heart, courage to make his love known. And when we have our naked frailties hid, that suffering exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to no further. Let's not consult with him. To show them false sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. Where we are, there are daggers in men's smiles. The near and blood. The near and bloody. Shift away. There's worry in that fifth, which fills itself when there's no mercy left. I was dreadful and things strange. On Tuesday last, a falcon towering in her pride of place was by a mousing owl, arced at and killed. it now. King Cordor Glam's all, as the weird children promised. And yet I fear thou played most foully for it. Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. They hailed him as a father to a line of kings. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. The gracious Duncan have I murdered to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings. If they come true from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speech is shine. Why, by the verities on thee, may good. May they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope. But hush no more.
quiet. Tonight we hold a solemn supper. I request your presence. It's for your ride. It's far, my lord, as we'll fill up the time to exist in supper. Those fly odds with you. Why? Our time does call upon us. Bow not our feast. My lord, I will not. We are men, my liege. Ah, oh, in the catalogue you go for men. As hounds and greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, shuffs, water rugs and demi wolves that clept all by the name of dog. I am one, my liege. From the vile blows and buffets of the world, I have so incensed that I am reckless where I do despite the world. And I another. Both of you know Banquo is your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. It must be done tonight. In Burnham Wood. Flyance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's must embrace the fate of that dark hour. <sighs> it is concluded. Banquo. Our soul's flight, if we find heaven, must find it tonight. desires got without content. It's safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. <clears throat> I know, my lord. I know, my lord. Why do you keep alone? The sorriest fancies your companions make, and using those thoughts which should indeed have died within, they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself. What's our poor Manis remains in danger of her former tooth. The frame of things disjoint, both the worlds suffer, ere we will eat our meal in fear, or sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams as shakers nightly. Better to be with the dead than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst. No steel, no poison, foreign levy, malice, domestic, nothing can touch him further. Come on. Gentle, my lord. Sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. So shall I, lord, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence both with eye and tongue. Unsafe the while. We must lave our honours in these fluttering streams and make our faces visits to our hearts, disguising what they are. Don't leave this! Full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. 
And that's the bank line is fly on sleeve. What's to be done? Be innocent to the knowledge there is, Chuck. Till I applaud the day. Seen in night. Scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day. Mother bloody and invisible hand cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens. The cry makes wing to the rocky wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse. Those night's black agents to their praise do rouse. I marvel, stop my words. Hold these still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by hell. Join with us, Macbeth, and he's not our mistrust. Tis he. Let it come down. Ah! Fly! 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 For him. I want the best of the good throats. That's all, sir. Flans escaped. <laughs> Command Macduff return to attend our pleasure. Come on, Captain. I'm fine. Bound into saucy doubts and fears. Your royal lord, you do not give the cheer. Here we now at our country's honour roofed, with the graced person of our banquo present. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Go on! Yeah! Yeah! Say, oh, they didn't have to shake thy gory looks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His Highness is not well. So, worthy friends, my lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? 
I and a bold one that they look upon that which might appall the devil. Oh, stop. This is the very painting of your fear. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces? See that? Behold! Behold! Look! Look! No! Why oh, care I? That can not speak to. The charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back. Well, then our monuments should be the moors of Kite. Oh, quite unmanned in folly. If I stand there, I saw him. Fie for shame! The time had been when the brains were out, the men would die and there an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do like you. Oh, they forget. They're not me as a meme, I'm as worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those who know me. Come along now to all, and I'll sit down. Give me some wine, fill full. I drink. To the general joy of the whole table. Whee! And to our dear friend Bankwide, whom we miss. Woody, we're here. To all and him we first. And all to all. Our duty's in the pledge. Our duty's in the pledge. Oh Lord, McDuff will not come. He says no, not I. Oh Lord, quit muscling. Thy bones are marvellous, thy blood is colder. That's no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Peers, but it's a thing of custom, tis no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. Oh, man, there, right there. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, or the Hurgan tiger. Take any shape but that. And my firm nerves shall never tremble or be alive again. And bear me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I have it, then protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow! My sight being gone, I'm a man again. Pray you be still. You have displaced the mirth and broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. You make me strange. Even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. A kind good night to all. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stands me none to move. Trees to speak. Walkers and understood relations upon magpies pies and shuffs and rooks brought forth the secret is none of blood. What's the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? I say you McDuff denies his person at our great bidding. Did you send him, sir? I will tomorrow to the weird children. Nor shall they speak. Now I'm bent to know by the worst means the worst. My blood stepped in so far that should I wait no more. Returning were as tedious as gone. Strange things I have in head. A will to hand. This must be out there, they may be scanned. You like the season of all natures. Sleep. Come all to sleep.
Gracious Duncan must pit it of Macbeth. Larry was dead. I and the right valiant Banquo walked too late. Whom you may say, if please you, Flaon's killed for Flaon's flick. Who cannot wonder thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and Donna Blian to kill their gracious father? Damn fact. How did it grieve Macbeth? They did not straight in pious rage the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep. Was that not nobly done? I am wisely too, for it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. Dunsinane Hill shall come against you. Yep, and my heart throbs to know one thing. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? and an eternal curse fall upon you. Show. 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. First things in my heart should be the first things in my hand, and even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done, the castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. Mother, is my father a traitor? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies, and everyone that does so is a traitor and should be hanged. You're not going to hear it. Thank you for the Lord. you ask me thinks I'm too savage to do worse to you with that cruelty which is now your person. Have you preserved your dear by my own? With this shall I fly?
This tyrant, whose soul name blisters our tongues, was once for honest. You have loved him well. They have not touched you yet. I am not treacherous, but my Beth is. Thy royal father was a most sainted king. The queen that born you, often upon her knee that on her feet, died every day she lived. When that rawness left your wife and child, those precious motives, those strong not to love without leave taking. I am not the villain thou thinkst. See who comes here. My countrymen, forget a name now. How does my wife? Well, well. And my children? Well, sir. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Beat their comfort. We're coming hither. Would I could answer this comfort with the like, but I have words that would be held out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. Concerned here. The general cause, or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it bears some woe. Though the main part pertains to you alone. Well, if it be mine, keep it not from me, man. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever. I can guess at it, you. You're ghastly surprised. Your wife and babe savagely slaughtered. My children, too? Wife, children, all that could be found. My wife. Kill too? I've said. Be comforted. Let's make us make sense of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones, did you say? I've said. Oh, hell, God. All? What? All my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop. This beauty like a man. I, I shall do so, but first I must I must feel it as a man. First I must feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. <laughs> Did you ever look on I would not take their part? <laughs> Sinful my God. Sinful my God. <laughs> they were all stuck for me. Heaven rest them now.
here's a spot. Um, spot out, I see. One, two. Well, then it is time to do it. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear? Who knows that when none can call our power to a compt? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? hands ne'er be clean. No more of that, my lord, no more of that. You are all with this starting. Here's the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. You yet again, Banquo's buried, he cannot come out of his grave. To bed, to bed. There's a knocking at the gate. What's done cannot be undone. What news more? It was confirmed, my lord. It was reported. Go prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lily-livered boy. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest to come to Dunsinane. What's your gracious pleasure? I'm sick at heart. This push will cheer me ever or deceive me now. I've lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the sea. A yellow leaf. And such things as should accompany old age as honour. Love, obedience, troops of friends. I must not look to have. And in their stead, curses. Not loud. But deep. Mouth on it. Which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not.
What's that noise? I have supped full of horrors. Dionysus. Familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once start me. The Queen, my lord. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time. All our yesterdays have been lighted, fools, the way to dusty death. Out. Out. Brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. Poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It's a tale. Told by an idiot. With a sound and fury signifying nothing. Fear not. So Burnham Wood to come to Dunsinane. <laughs> I'm going to be weary of the sun. Wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell. Come on, wind. Blow. Wreck. At least we'll die with harness on our back. See, this is not born of a woman. Such a woman out of here, one man. Of all men else, I've avoided thee. Get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee. My dove was from his mother's womb, untimely ripped. <laughs> I'll not fight with thee. And yield thee coward, and live to be the show and gears at the time. We'll have thee as our rarer monsters are, painted upon a pool and under it. Here you may see the tyrant. Zion Macduff! <laughs> Thank you. 
be a king. For so thou art. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves. And make us even with you. Alas. Poor country. Almost afraid to know itself. <laughs> 